Uh, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK um, to you all, all over the globe, and welcome to my channel. First time passing through, you can always subscribe, like and share. For those of you who are already with me, who have already got my bag, who are supporting me, thank you very much um, for your comments and for your support. Um, today I decided to, it's not really a part two, somebody asked me to do a part two for the flu virus. This isn't really a part two, but it is a part two, if you see what I mean. I think you'll get my drift as I go along. Anyway, I decided to look up whether or not vaccinations were required if, if I or anyone went to Jamaica. So when I went onto the NHS website, it listed all these vaccinations. And I'm telling you what vaccinations they suggest you need if you go to Jamaica. Hepatitis A, Hepatitis B, Typhoid, Yellow Fever, Rabies, Meningitis, Polio, Measles, Mumps, Rubella, in brackets MMR, Tetanus, Diphtheria and Pertussis, Chicken Pox, Shingles, Pneumonia and Influenza. I'm thinking to myself, I've been to Jamaica lots of times. I don't remember having all of those vaccinations. So I called my mate and I, because I haven't been to Jamaica for like five, six years. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I forgot to have, maybe I had them and I forgot. So I called my mate. She's born in Jamaica. So I said to her, um, did you have any vaccinations before you went to Jamaica? Because she went last year. She goes, no, she didn't. Then I asked um, somebody who was born in Britain and who went to Jamaica. I said to them, did you have any vaccinations when you went to Jamaica? No, she said, I didn't need any. And I started thinking that most people, especially black people, when they're going back to their country or their parents' country or, you know, African countries, I'm sure they don't get vaccinated. So then I started wondering, who is the vaccination for? Is it for white people? Because if black people don't vaccinate themselves before they go to the countries of origin, it has to be then for white people to have these vaccinations. It's just a thought because I'm just thinking, I don't know anybody who's gone to Jamaica or the Caribbean and have had um, vaccinations. I know when I was living in Africa or when I planned, well, I was living in Africa, but before I went, I needed certain vaccinations. I, I know that, that much. But I'm trying to think now whether that was because I was going to a place that was strange to me. It's very really interesting how, you know, we do things automatically, don't we? You know, we see these instructions and we go off and we totter off and, you know, they're always saying to us, you know, have your vaccinations, you know, about a month in advance, make sure, you know, your body builds up an immunity. And so you do it because, you know, I mean, I've had <clears throat> most of my vaccinations anyway because, of where I work but the fact of the matter is I didn't feel I needed it if I went to Jamaica and then to see that long list of vaccinations that are required if you go there I mean you'll probably need about two or three months to get through all of that because if you have all of those at the same time you're bound to be sick colleague of mine is going to Kenya and I don't know how many vaccinations they gave her but she looked like she looked like a dead dog she looked like a dead dog you know because you know that it's foreign to the body and the body has to get used to it but then of course that led me to the germ warfare and then I'm thinking you know I'd I'd heard of the Tuskegee um, experiment the syphilis study which I told you about in another video, but I hadn't heard about the one in Britain. I wonder how many of you have heard about the one in Britain, the germ warfare, where they deliberately sprayed bacteria 
and germs and zinc goodness knows what in certain areas to see how we would react to those germs. Now this is some time ago, it's going back from the 1950s to 1972 I believe, but it's running parallel with the Te Tuskegee um, Philip syphilis um, experiment. They were running parallel during that same time period. Okay, the, Tusk the Tuskegee, um, such a hard word to say, the Tuskegee um, syphilis experiment started off in 1930s to 1970s, but these studies that the UK were doing were from the 1950s to the 1970s. Once again, secretly to see people's reaction, spraying germs and bacteria in the air to see how we're going to respond to it. Nobody knows about it. We all, you know, you kind of wonder these days, why are you getting the flu every five minutes? Why is it lasting so long? You haven't been in contact with anybody who's unhealthy, yet you wake up one day and you have all these ailments stuffy nose, a sniffling like the other day. I told you, I felt really run down. Today, I've still got the sniffles. I thought I'd got rid of it. But you know, today I've still got the sniffles, still got this bloody irritating cough every now and then. And it makes you wonder, are they, are they doing something else? Is there another secret germ warfare going on? How would we know? You know, they'd blame it. They'd actually blame it if there was a germ warfare going on. They'd actually blame it on the fact that you haven't had your flu shot. You realise that. That's what they'd blame it on. And when they're saying, oh, it's, it, every strain is getting worse and worse and worse, how do we know it's not something that they're spraying in the air to, to um, using us as guinea pigs to see how we react to it? We don't know. We could, we could be getting that flu shot. They could be spraying something in the air to see if the flu shot actually can fight whatever it is they're spraying. How do we know? That's my little rant. So I'm going to read what I have found. Okay. Um, started off with a nice little light-hearted trip about going to Jamaica and then I end up on this but sorry peeps it's the way it's just the way it goes I kind of go in one 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 track and then I end up going down all these hills and valleys and finding out different information anyway let me see what it says here um this was in I think this was in 1970s much of Britain was exposed to bacteria sprayed in secret trials um yeah okay the ministry of this was sorry i'm kind of I'm trying to read it but it's not because it's quite a long time ago i'm only using it as a reference okay it's not like i'm saying they're doing it now but they did do it according to this 2002 when they found out that they did it Okay, the Ministry of Defence turned large parts of the country into a giant laboratory to conduct a series of ger secret germ warfare tests on the public. A government report just released provides, for the first time, a comprehensive official history of Britain's biological weapon trials between 1940 and 1979. Oh! So it's, it is running almost parallel with the Kiskagee study, syphilis study. I think that was 1930s to 1970s. Yeah, that was 1930s. So this was 10 years afterwards. Anyway, this went on from 1940 to 1979. That's 39 years. They're spraying germ warfare all over the place. Many of these tests involved releasing potentially dangerous chemicals and microorganisms over vast swathes of the population without the public being told. While details of some secret trials have emerged in recent years, when they're saying recent years, this article was printed in 2002. So you need to bear that in mind. This is what, about 17 years ago. Okay, but still relevant. Um, 
While details of some secret trials have emerged in recent years, the 60-page report reveals new information about more than 100 covert experiments. The report reveals that military personnel were briefed to tell any inquisitive inquirer that the trials were part of research projects into weather and air pollution. Why would you want to do that, though? Why would you want to put people at risk like that? The tests carried out by government scientists at Porton Down, don't know where that is, were designed to help the Ministry of Defence access Britain's vulnerability if the Russians were to have released clouds of deadly germs over the country. In most cases, the trials did not use biological weapons, but alternatives, which scientists believed would mimic germ warfare, and which the Ministry of Defence claimed were harmless. MOD, I think that is Ministry of Defence, were harmless. But families in certain areas of the country who have children with birth defects are demanding a public inquiry. One chapter of the report, the fluorescent particle trials, you better write that down, fluorescent particle trials, if you want to look that up, reveals how between 1955 and 1963, planes flew from the northeast England to the tip of Cornwall along the south and west coast, dropping huge amounts of zinc candin, cadmium, cadmium sulphide on the population. The chemical drifted miles inland. Its fluorescence allowed the spread to be monitored. In another trial using zinc cadmium sulphide, a, ger a generator was towed along a road near Frome in Somerset where it spewed the chemical for an hour. World War was considered by the Allies as a chemical weapon. Weapon. I must have missed a bit out there. Anyway, in another chapter, large area coverage. Co oh, just going all over the place here. Large area coverage trials. The Ministry of Defence describes how between 1961. In 1968, more than a million people along the south coast of England, from Torquay to the New Forest, were exposed to bacteria, included E. coli and bat bacillus, globigil, globigil, so that's bat bacillus globigil, which mimics anthrax, and anthrax is one of the most dangerous germs. These releases came from a military ship, the Ice Whale, anchored off the Dorset coast, which sprayed the microorganisms in a 5 to 10 mile radius. The report also reveals details of the DICE trials in South Dorset. I should have really looked up some of these. Between 1971 and 1975. These involved US and UK military scientists spraying into the air massive quantities of serratia, marcescens bacteria, with an anthrax stimulant and phenol. Similar bacteria was released in the sabotage trials. I'm going to have to look these trials up. You got so you've got the um, fluorescent particle trials, you've got the large area coverage trials, and you've got the sabotage trials, and you've got the dice trials, D I C E. So similar bacteria was released in the sabotage trials between 1952 and 1964. These were tests to, de de to determine the vulnerability of large government buildings and public transport to attack. In 1956, bacteria was released on the London Underground at lunchtime along the Northern Line 
between Collier's Wood and Tooting Broadway. The results show that the organism dispersed about 10 miles. Similar tests were conducted in tunnels running under government buildings in Whitehall. Experiments conducted between 1964 and 1973 involved attaching germs to the threads of spider's webs in boxes to test how the germs would survive in different environments. These tests were carried out in dozens of locations across the country, including London's West End, Southampton and Swindon. The report also gives details of more than a dozen smaller field trials between 1968 and 1977. What's interesting is that the areas where they're doing the trials are quite suburban areas and I would think predominantly white areas. That is really, really bizarre. And London West End. Why would they do the trials down there? Not unless because of the tourists. I, I, I have no idea. Southampton, Swindon, and that Torquay. Very Dorset. And they had something similar in, uh, well, something worse in Japan called Unit 731. They deliberately infected people with the plague, anthrax, cholera and other, and other pathogens. 3,000 enemy soldiers were used as guinea pigs. OK, in recent years, the Ministry of Defence has commissioned two scientists to review the safety of these tests. Both reported that there was no risk to public health, although one suggested that elderly or people suffering from breathing diseases may have been seriously harmed if they inhaled sufficient quantities of the microorganisms. However, some families in areas which bore the brunt of the secret tests are convinced the experiments have led to their children suffering birth defects physical handicaps and learning difficulties. David Orman, an army officer from Bournemouth, is demanding a public inquiry. His wife, Jeanette, was born in East Lulworth in Dorset, close to where many of the trials took place. She had a miscarriage, then gave birth to a son with cerebral palsy. Jeanette's three sisters are born in the village while the tests were being carried out, have also given birth to children with unexplained problems, as have a number of their neighbours. That reminds me of that movie, Eleanor Brockovich. Remember, I don't know how many of you saw that. The local health authority has denied there is a cluster, but Allman believes otherwise. He said, I'm convinced something terrible has happened. The village was a close-knit community and to have so many birth defects over the, such a short space of time has to be more than a coincidence. Successive governments have tried to keep details of the germ warfare test secrets while reports of a number of the trials have emerged over the years through the Public Records Office. This latest Ministry of Defence document, which was released to Liberal Democrat Ms. MP Norman Baker, gives the fullest official version of the biological warfare trials yet. Baker said, I welcome the fact that the government has finally released this information, but question why it has taken so long. It is unacceptable that the public were treated as guinea pigs without their knowledge. And I want to be sure that the Ministry of Defence claims that these chemicals and bacteria used were safe is true. The Ministry of Defence report traces the history of the UK's research into germ, germ welfare since Second World War, when Porton Down produced five million cattle cakes filled with deadly anthrax spores, 
which would have been dropped in Germany to kill their livestock. It also gives details of the infamous anthrax experiment on Grunard on the Scottish coast, which left the island so contaminated it could not be inhabited it could not be inhabited until the late 1980s. The report also confirms the use of anthrax and other deadly germs on tests aboard ships in the Caribbean and off the Scottish coast during the 1950s. The document states tacit approval for stimulant trials where the public might be exposed was strongly influenced by defence security considerations aimed obviously at restricting public knowledge. An important corollary to this was that the need to avoid public alarm and disquiet about the vulnerability of the civil population to biological warfare attack. Sue Ellison, spokeswoman for Port and Down, said independent reports for eminent scientists have shown there was no danger to public health from these releases, which were carried out to protect the public. The results from these trials will save lives, should the country or our force face an attack by chemical or biological weapons. Asked whether such tests are still being carried out, she said, it is not our policy to discuss ongoing research. So apparently, um, biological warfare is banned for the same reason nuclear chemical weapons are banned. But now, but how is it monitored? And these, this germ warfare in, cap, in capacitates rather than kills. So you know it's a slow and horrid death. But the thing is, if they're saying, you know, they're not obliged to tell you the ongoing, what's going on now, means something's going on. Apparently biological weapons date back to 1500 BC when they sent the plague victims to enemy lands, catapulting diseased corpses into besieged fortresses. Biological weapons programs are being developed in USA, UK and Russia. It was outlawed under 1972's Biological Weapon Convention and Geneva Protocol. But there are more ways to having a to hanging a cat without putting a rope around its neck. In other words, it is outlawed, but we do not know what they're doing behind closed doors, and we never will. So when you see all of the, these things going out, and that you know, it's a it's it's uncanny that I related just having vaccines to you know for holidays. To this, um, to these trials, but sometimes when you're looking for one thing, it kind of leads you to another, and there may or may not be a link, but I link them anyway. So, what is biological warfare for those of you who don't know? It's the use of biological toxins, infectious agents such as bacteria viruses and fungi with the intent to kill or incapacitate humans as an act of war. Used on the defenceless, people don't know that it's happening to them and apparently bacillus anthracis bacteria is the worst of them all and causes anthrax. So, not a very pleasant subject, is it? But, you know, it's, it's good to know. Like I said, you know, a lot of us, we go around with, like robots. We go along doing things as we normally do. We don't question anything. You know, we just behave as normal. And that's what they actually rely on. So, you know, all I'm doing is putting it out there. Like I said, that is quite an old... Um, piece of information 2002 it's a long time ago but when you think that they do these things without us knowing that's the scary thing and then you know who knows what's in these vaccines and like I said you know so many people go back and not have them so who are they actually for I think they're probably for people who are not used to those countries and who are probably more susceptible 
to catching something. Ah, oh, what can I say, peeps? I do my best to inform, and that's all I can do. Bye-bye.